ku sintang ga Yesu Amin na tuna ku sinza Tuna ku sinza Tuna ku sinza Haleluya Tuna ku sinza Tuna ku sinza Amin Yesu tuna ku tenda Emu gama every situation you are the lord of our lives thank you for you permitted us to see what we see you have permitted us to hear what we hear you welcome in our hearts may you dwell in us we welcome your presence we pray you may quicken someone to get closer to you Give you glory, be glorified. Through Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We thank God for today. We thank God that we've come into our second service. The first service is done. But above all, we thank God who has kept us. We thank God and I want to thank God who has kept you alive wherever you are watching us online. I want to thank God who has kept you. Don't see some people. 
And I believe that God is going to continue keeping us. Obey the laws. Do not get those words. People say coronavirus is not there. Coronavirus is there and it's real. Even in Uganda it's there. But what? Even some people are sick. By today, they have confirmed 30 people. But 30 are the ones who are sick. But they are saying they have been among the people. So there must be some other people that are infected. So let us obey the instructions of our leaders. God will do us good. And you that is out there and you didn't know how you can reach to us. Especially there are some people want to give in their tithe and offertory. I'll give you the phone numbers that are going to be displayed on the screen also. But then after I'll give you the phone number. And the account number of the church. And even my phone number is on personal. It is on, we can talk. And I hope that maybe in the future we shall be getting some words. Wednesday we shall have prayer. We shall get service still. But I will be sending some messages even if for a few minutes like 10. We shall continue putting things right slow. This moment I want us to go into the world. Let's pray. Thank you even for today. Holy Spirit, come and reveal your word. You bring out the depth of the word word for us. That we may understand it and discuss it in our wisdom. That we may know it and we move in it. We come in our midst through Jesus' name.
I want to talk about the way of overcoming the spirit of fear. How to overcome the spirit of fear. People in the morning service. We ended somewhere, so I want us to proceed from where we ended. Overcoming the spirit of fear. Because the spirit of fear now, as the Bible teaches in Genesis, that the world was void and it was mixed up. Spirit of the Lord hovered. Even this spirit of fear, especially in this generation, in this time, it is hoovering. It has hoovered the hearts of men. It has hoovered the lives of people. The spirit of fear. You can overcome the spirit of fear. You can overcome the spirit of fear. That is why it would have come to talk about that. Let me begin with the scripture. In Second Timothy, chapter one, verses seven, it says, "Let me for God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind God did not give us a spirit of fear some of the portions God gave you is not a spirit of fear bring out the spirit of fear overcome the spirit of fear may you fight it and take it out of your life spirit of fear there are some people that fear everything there are some people who fear even their husband they got married to others even fear their wives even if they want to tell them something they can't talk to them they even fear their wives spirit of fear never forget a man who was dismissed from work he was working somewhere and they stopped him he was working in these people that make things out of paper and they stopped him when they stopped him this man was so afraid but he had the spirit of fear and the wife started striking so that time I was still in Kasubi and then the woman wanted to go she was like why doesn't the husband buy food maybe he has some other woman he does not care about the children he does not care about anything so we call this man when he came I talked to him I told him your wife has reported something it's like I want to tell you the truth I lost a job like three months ago I don't work I leave home and the wife says you're welcome we'll come back then I'm like I'm so tired the truth is I lost the job I told him why don't you tell your wife and she gets to know and then you pray it's like I fear to tell the wife pastor the moment I speak that the wife may divorce so this man he had the spirit of fear he fears even to talk to the wife the truth imagine how he moves in deceit spirit of fear is like that it causes you to sin where you don't have sinned but we can overcome the spirit of fear and we overcome it so many people in this generation they are dressed with this spirit of fear they fear men someone fears people even moving on the way they move when they are bowing down their head even if they call them they no longer hear they fear at their workplace they fear people they end up making mistakes they fear people what they will say they fear people to see them 
they fear. They so many people have the spirit of fear. They fear their enemies. They fear their enemies. They can even leave the house and leave it there. Just because your I enemy get has spoken a word. Spirit of fear. What the spirit of fear does, your enemy might do something or he speaks out something. But the spirit of fear, what he does, he starts Start building things in you. You start devising other things. You put them there which are not there. The spirit of fear, what it does, it brings someone thoughts and they cannot rest anymore. Some people fear situations. They draw situations in the future. And they bring them closer. Yet some they will never reach even there. But some people are worried. Worried whether they will be in 3,000. How do you know whether you'll get there? You bring even things which are not there closer. You bring them closer. And we are in a generation. People speak. They may tell you the layer, the ozone layer has been penetrated through. And then you spend sleepless nights. The ozone layer has been penetrated through. As if you even know how it looks like. There are some things which should not concern you. You don't know how it looks like. Just leave it. Even if you fear there is nothing, you okay, go and attack it. You fear every situation. You fear what is surrounding you. People tell you the lake is filled with water. The water has increased in the lake. You have never seen Victoria. Like it is about to get closer to my house. They ask you why is it? You point in a different direction. You don't even know where it is. Just because you have a spirit of fear. We can overcome the spirit of fear. And then we are bold. Made this all situation. And then we see the goodness of the Lord. Do not fear any situation. The spirit of fear poverty. They have enough. They have the eats. But whenever they think of poverty. The spirit of fear causes you to think what is not there. You draw things which are not there. Some before they get married. What if I don't produce? And then she becomes worried of that house. What if I marry and I don't produce? That one is called the spirit of fear. I will never forget. There's a friend of mine. As I talk about the spirit of fear. This man. They were in a boarding. They were in boarding. He was in senior two. They picked him from school. They took him. They had a wedding home. When they took him home, they had the wedding. The owner of the wedding had got his suit from England worth 500 pounds. When this child came back, he came and went to sleep. And then the matron went on searching. He's like, why are you asleep this way? And then you're not in class. The child was all cold. Was senior two. Senior two. He was afraid. He checked him. He was so afraid. He had feared so much. So they took him to the teachers. They asked him, what is it? Did you fall sick from them? What situation are you going through? Then this child brought out his hand. Told them I got afraid. And I feel wherever I am, I'm in fear. What are you afraid of? Like when I went to the wedding. That's why I got something that threatened me. When the bride came, I asked the gown. They told me it's 500 pounds. Then I multiplied with Ugandan currency. When they told me the amount, then I was filled with fear in my heart. I like, By the time I reach a time of getting married, will I be able to buy a gown? To so a child in senior two, he has failed to eat food, he has failed to read books just because of the gown. Of 500 pounds. She's so worried. 
She's in bed. She can no longer read books. By the time she reaches the age of getting married, how will she be able to manage the 500 pounds to buy a gown? So many people fear things which are not there. But God never gave us a spirit of fear. Do not fear poverty. Some people fear money when it is not there. But even others, others, they even fear when they have the money. These men, the thieves, that steal on the streets, they even don't know where the money is. But you, the pastor, the one that shows the thief that money is hidden here, just because you move with money, so wherever you move three feet, the spirit of fear says, maybe the bag where I put the money is. It got torn. And then you try to touch it. And then the thief sees. And then you move a little. And then it's like, be careful. Maybe the pockets may develop holes. And then you try to check. So by the time the thief comes, he just tells the friends. On this hand, that is where the money is. Don't you see him tapping? Some people even fear money. There are some people having just money. They fear to have it. They fear money. And that's why some when they go because they fear money they buy whatever they don't even need just to use the money spirit of fear it's like when I have it they may even kill me some fear because of getting rich they spend sleepless nights they sleep in this house they will think I'm so rich and then he remains in a small house and then he hires the big house because of the spirit of fear. Of fear. Makes you fail to rejoice in the land God has given you. And the spirit of fear. If God blesses you, you can't see the blessing. Just because you have fear in you. You fear darkness. Whenever you switch off the lights. Some people out there watching me. You can't switch off the light. You're like, what if I switch off? I see the devil coming towards me. The devil moves in darkness. Even in the light, he moves. Switch off your light and sleep. And then you enjoy your sleep. You can't sleep you like when I switch off the light. Some people you get the light if it's a lamp you will get burnt in the house because of the spirit of fear. And when light comes, still you fear the light. You fear everything. Even boarding a car you fear. You fear the creation, you fear everything. And when a generation, when people fear, throw fear. They throw fear. You see a pussycat? Whenever you see a pussycat, it screams. When a bat lands on the iron ships, you have the spirit of fear. But I build in you the boldness of God. Let the birds move their own. Let the creation scream their own. For you have the spirit of boldness. Child of God, you're not supposed to fear. Spirit of fear makes you fail to progress. You cannot progress if you have the spirit of fear. Spirit of fear makes you fail to have any step you move forward. You will never have any step you move forward just because you fear. That is what the spirit of fear does. The spirit of fear makes so many people fail to be important. They're not useful. Just because they have the spirit of fear. Spirit of fear comes from the devil. We are not given the spirit of fear. Chase away fear. And even the worries will go. Even the joy of the Lord is going to come into your life. Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah 35. Isaiah chapter 35. And verses 3. And verses 4. Isaiah 35. Munyweze mikone minafu. Muka kasena ama vivi. Aga jugumira. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. In this moment we are in. 
our biggest ministry is of encouraging people children of God we are supposed to be a source of encouragement after overcoming fear we start encouraging other people strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees those who fear at your workplace you are the one to be the answer even if they are your boss and they start confessing words that are negative strengthen the weak hands and the feeble knees tell them no because this is the truth child of God even if you are just employed but in that company where you are you are the one that causes it to stand whenever you have fear you are going to fail this organization or any workplace where you are to go on because because of your presence God comes down and gives a blessing. So we are supposed to be wherever you are, the village, family, in the family, mumaka, in our homes, in everything. The spirit of fear should go. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are fearful, be strong, do not fear. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God, He will come and save you. Say to those who are fearful in heart, that do not fear, strengthen the feeble knees and the weak hands, and tell those with a fearful heart, do not fear that is the minutes we ought to have now but how will you do it unless you yourself has overcome the spirit of fear overcome the spirit of fear we are supposed to be people that encourage others encouraging other people let's go to Psalms 91 from verses 3 Zaburi chenda muemu. Psalms 91. Onyolo kusatu. Verses 3. Katugene mpola mpola. We go slow. Luga mantukubango yoyo. Yana ukulo kolanga mumutego ogo muizi. Ne muka umpuli omubi. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perious pestilence. Ono bine vizika akati. The things that have come now. Bible says in Ecclesiastes what has happened happened way back this disease that are threatened people they call it pestilence he has said that he will save you from the perilous pestilence you're not the one to save yourself and you've not been helping yourself it is God that is going to help you it is God going to save you surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence Excellence. from the snare of the fowler when a fowler has laid a snare to catch you the bible has said that God is going to save you he is going to remove all the traps with the traps of sorcerers traps of those that make you fail all of them the devil has been sending God is removing them have you read the bible saying that he kills the plans of the evil ones and they fail to fulfill what they had planned so he has said he kills surely he shall from the evil one he's going to save you from any disease just because we, we talk of coronavirus but we have some other diseases we have cancer we have asthma we have so many other diseases that attack but in all those and others yet to come God has pledged that is going to save you you are going to live 
Daudi the preaches the moment and says we are going to get there he encourages himself he says I will never die but I will live and do the works of the Lord make a good confession amid this situation whenever they bring arrows to you may you quench them and put them down verses 4 and they will be quenched he shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. Do you see what God does? Amid his diseases, amid his problems, amid his battles, amid his enemies, he will cover you always with his feathers. Do not fear anything. Who can snatch you from the hand of God? After him covering you, he just speaks a word. Just being with God. There are some things when God can't even speak. When he doesn't speak, because the devil fears are Jesus. Just giving yourself to him. Just the presence of God. Just as far away the devil. The devil can be so many miles away. So whenever you chase the spirit of fear, and then you get closer to the spirit of faith, and then you have faith, and then you put your trust in our Lord, He will cover you with His feathers. I pray that He covers you in your family with His feathers. Where you walk, let Him cover you with His feathers. Those that are looking for you to do evil to you, may the Lord cover you his wings. Verses 5. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day. You shall not fear by terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day. That is what our God does. He gives you boldness. And then you know that he's there. David has spoken. In Psalms 23. And verses 4. And he shall come out Though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for you are with me. You need to get all your trust and throw it in God. And then you fail to fear anything. You fail to fear any situation. You get all your trust and put it in God. In the night I was thinking. And even got tears out. I was like, where did I get the boldness? I need that boldness to come back. When God called me to go and serve him, I left everything. I got all my trust. And then put it in God. My parents cancelled me. They failed. Because God had called me. I didn't know what children were going to eat. But I refused to fear. I didn't know what to put on. But I refused to fear. I was like the God who saved me. The God who pulled me from wherever he got me from. The God who has been taking care of me all along. He has saved me in what I see and what I don't see. By the way. By the way, what you see that God has done is very little. Most of the things and the biggest things, He doesn't show them to you not to threaten you. Like if He's the one who created me, and I don't live by accident, if He has called me, and it's like I come and serve Him, now it is time for me to die. And I will not fear any situation. Situation rose. Told Him you're my trust. But I want to encourage you. God does not lie. God is faithful. He says I'll protect you. He protects He says I'll provide. He provides. Do not fear any situation. Do not fear people. Do not fear do not, fear. Do not fear what you go through. Because what you go through, if you focus on it, child of God, let me give you one trick. The way you can overcome fear and worries. Get your eyes 
every day and you remove them from the problem focus your eyes on God whenever you look at the problem the problem speaks the problem grows bigger the problem grows bigger remove your eyes from the problem focus it on God whenever you see the bigness of God the problem reduces the problem goes away just the spirit of fear out of your life just the spirit of fear out of your family just the spirit of fear out of your future do not fear Fear. Verse 6. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day. Thieves are there and everyone purposing evil for you. But in all those, still you'll overcome. God will end up when you've crossed over. No all of the pestilence that walks in darkness, no all of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. This is when you move in darkness and you can't even see which sickness is that. All those that can come. Do not fear, enjoy the life God has given you. Listen to what he says. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Listen to this man. He fears nothing. He's not afraid of anything. He doesn't fear situation. He doesn't fear what he goes through. He looks at his God. Do not fear. God does not want to see anyone afraid. He doesn't relate with fearful people. And in the book of Job, in the book of Job, there are six things. Job 5, six things. Yet seven. That God saves us Job from. Job 5, verse 19. It says, from verses 18. For he bruises, but he binds up. He wounds, but his hands make wall. We are in a moment whenever you put on the TV, you see dead bodies only. But it is God who pierces and is the one who heals. It is so hard to tell people. You need someone who can speak in such a situation. Even what we go through now, it will come to pass. It will go away and we congregate like we used before. It will go away and then we get back to our work. It will go away. Some people who have a garden, may you dig. Cultivate. False prophets have risen now. They are making God speak. I saw the Lord. When he's so annoyed. When he's summing up the whole world. Those even someone who has never dreamt now they dream. I saw the Lord. People falsely accuse themselves what they have not seen. But yet all people. They produce arrows of fear. It's the one who bruises and is the one who binds up. We are in his hands. We are not supposed to fear. Whatever comes to our lives, you want to encourage you. Whenever you check your life, and there's a situation that has come to you, you check your life, and you've moved well, there's nothing wrong you've done. You check your life. You check your life. What is next, do not fear. Leave the rest to God. What you can't change, why do you mind about them? What you can't change, why do you mind about it? There's a man who came and challenged me. He came from the US. He was called Pastor John. Pastor John, he came in a, a moment when he was cutting off people's heads. The man came from the US, a white man. There's a friend of mine who visited him. 
Tufunye motoka tole me gereka tugende guru and we go to gulu Onu na mugamba this one told him ke guru bate batira yaba but gulu is a terrible place they kill people there Sasa yavude mu America this man from the US Bio nanga bimanyi he knew everything Nagamba what he said Naganti obwaka baka bwaka tonda yibanga we buli if the kingdom of god is present there's nothing that can happen to our lives and there's nothing that can attack our lives if God does not know it it's like I move in the kingdom of God let's go to Gulu I fear this white man he moved he went to Gulu he went to people in camps and he spent there a full week the other man never had fear and he told us like this we have not yet known the kingdom that we minister in the kingdom we minister in exceeds this worldly kingdom there is nothing that comes when God has not permitted my friend said it reached in the car as they are driving on tension this one every other time he was watching they may attack us John could be asleep <laughs> he's in the kingdom he does not fear he came from the US he does not fear he came and went to Guru he was telling about the people they killed like, in the kingdom he does not fear he's like the kingdom of heaven is more than the world if we have such boldness and then we fail to fear let's go to Job 5 and verses 19 we wawo musanvu te wabenga obi obuna kutuka ngako he shall deliver you in six troubles yes in seven no evil shall touch you ahulo mugaba gwa bana baka ya the portion of the children of god munjala anaku 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 nulanga obutafa olinyola makumya in famine he shall redeem you from death ne muntalo anaku nyanga mumanyi ge kitala and in war from the power of the sword mwana wa katunda tutya child of god fear not even if battles are there rising may you be of good cheer be of good cheer do not fear why even in wars he will deliver you even in famine he shall redeem you even if famine is too much the God you believed will deliver you do not fear anything do not fear anything listen to the next verse you shall be hidden from the scourge of the tongue even the abusers those that tear apart he said he will hide you from the scourge of the tongue that is the portion of the children of God the portion of the children of God Listen to what he says. And you shall not be afraid of destruction when it comes. When great storm is breaking everything you remain asleep that you will not fear when destruction comes but we are different people God has some people that he created when they move on earth like other people but when their nature is different they don't have fear they don't have worries a God creator of heaven and earth a God is the one with authority a God is the one with power he speaks and it happens no one can change it he is above everything he is above everyone he is above every honor the one we believe in rest do not fear even in destruction he has said that even in destruction you will not fear listen to the next part you shall laugh at destruction and famine and you shall not be afraid of the beasts of the earth amidst 
When other people are fearing destruction, they see you seated, relaxed, and laughing. That one will go away also. That one will pass. There is no situation that lasts forever. There's no that you laugh at destruction when it comes. You're just laughing. You're just laughing. And you will not fear the beasts of the earth. Do you know? Especially in Africa. Take out fear from you. God can protect you. You have slept in the village. But even those who sleep in the city now. Even the cockroaches. We move when they are in beds. You move when they are there. We used to sleep in my back cloth. We used to have those fleas that came during Amin's regime called Hajati. People of those years know them. They used to disturb people in Amin's regime. Those fleas were small but very stubborn. They used to land in the bush, the whole place. So my granny used to say, I didn't sleep at night. Those of Hajat spent the night disturbing me. But one time I was asleep. In the many fleas. Because we used to sleep with a lot of insects. You sleep with fleas. Bed bugs come, they come. The beds were not so good. Sometimes you wet them. You wet the beds and then even other insects. Come. But when a flea entered my ear, a flea entered my ear. Then I was like, it is going to go deep inside. But God protects. He put wax in the ears. This flea died even seed but it died in there. Yes, even in the wild beasts. You will not fear. Those that fear cockroaches. Those that fear caterpillars. People that fear lizards. You will not fear any beast. Do not fear. My friend hosted a hosted whites in his house. As you know, our houses in Africa. They have lots of things. It is our wealth. We have lizards. Even those blue lizards tend to enter. The cats enter. Then the lizards are all over. Those lizards, the whites, don't know them. That is our wealth in Africa. So the child, as he was seated, he saw an animal moving. And then he saw a rat. And then when this one came, the child was all an animal, an animal. on tension, fearing an animal. He had seen a rat. And when this one came, I told him, what is it? It has passed in there. When he came, what has he seen? An animal. And then he laughed. He has seen a rat. So this other, because he saw a rat, he was like, it's no more. This white person was afraid. He was seeing a beast. Even the wild beasts. You won't fear them. You will not fear snakes. You will not fear of anything. Some people fear to get out of the house. But you're fearing animals. Whenever you move out. And they tend to convert. Sometimes you watch on TV and then you see a lion and you sit on the veranda waiting for you and you spend sleepless nights. Do not fear because your God is with you. Do not fear anything. In the Bible there is a man I want to wind up with. He's called Nehemiah. 
Nehemiah refused to fear. Nehemiah refused to fear. Nehemiah 6. He refused to fear. And he said, I will not fear. And when he refused to fear, God joined him. Sanballat and Tobia. And they saw him building the temple. They tried to divert him. And he refused. And they saw he had built the whole wall. The Bible teaches that he went even outside and built other walls. And they said, what should we do? Let us attack him. And we tell him. They told him. Nehemiah. What you've built. The king is annoyed. The king is saying. That you want to take over the kingdom. Nehemiah refused to listen to them. And he proceeded with building. He refused to listen to them. He built. They sent him a man. To come. And threaten him. Do you know what? That's that's what what end end he sees you going forward and then he sends you the spirit of fear and and he sees you standing about to overcome and then he sends you the spirit of fear and then you take off and then you live where you are supposed to be just because you've gotten the spirit of fear Nehemiah refused the Bible teaches like this Nehemiah 6 Nehemiah 6 that San Balat and Geshem sent to me saying come let us meet together among the villages in the plain of Ono but they thought to do me harm so I sent messengers to them saying I'm doing a great work so that I cannot come down why should the work cease while I leave it and go down to you but they sent me this message four times and I answered them in the same manner then Sanballat sent his servant to me as before the fifth time with an open letter in his hand do you see how the enemy moves with arrows they have sent to Nehemiah messengers the first time he answers them. They send four times. That is what the enemy, how he looks for you. He looks for you from either side. The fear. He searches everywhere. And they sent him the fifth time. They are looking for Nehemiah to threaten him. But Nehemiah remained focused. Because fear. Divert you. And then you fail to do what you were supposed to do. Fear. Weakens you. And then you fail to pray the way you were supposed to pray. If someone has fear, they can't pray the way they were supposed to pray. If someone has fear, they can't plan the way they ought to plan. You don't enjoy life. You don't see the goodness of God. You don't see the bigness of God. Because of the spirit of fear, he comes and squeezes you. And then he shows you battles and wars. And after that, it shows that even if you die, you're going to hell. That is what it does. It shows that God is not minding about you, he's so far away from you. Overcome the spirit of fear. It shows like you have no wall around, you have no protection. Listen to the next verse. Let me read verses 8. I said that I was going to say that then I sent to him saying no such things as you say are being done but you invent them in your own heart they are telling him the kings know now you're building your own kingdom like those words have never happened you're just inventing them in your heart Some people tend to devise words to come and threaten you so and so is annoyed. So and so is annoyed. <laughs> Even the moment we are going through, this is people's message. God is so annoyed. God has not just gotten annoyed now. No. 
God is annoyed. From the beginning. God is annoyed. Whatever is being done. They have been doing them. He has not just gotten the anger now. No. People are like that. That is their nature. That is their nature. God is annoyed. He's destroying the whole world. God is going to hit the whole world. The end has come. The end has not just come like that. People have started interpreting these times to be the end days. We are in the end days now. Anytime Jesus is coming. No. The message of the end, we always teach it to you. You don't want to listen to it. Now when you saw coronavirus, you think the end has come. There are others making phone calls to each other. Are you still home? All others, <laughs> lest the rapture came already and we remained. We the ones that remained and others went already. The rapture has not yet come. You just afraid. Do not fear. That disease has come. It will go away. And we shall remain alive. So they devise words. Verses nine. But this For they all were trying to make us afraid, saying, Their hands will be weakened in the work and it shall not be done. Now, therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. Have you seen what fear? Does? It weakens the hands. But it comes from the mind. They send you words to weaken you, to fear, to be that is not working, what he's supposed to do. But he says, God, strengthen me. I made this fear. Pray for God to strengthen you that you may be a victor where others fear when you don't fear. Verses next. Verse 12. And Afterward, I came to the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, the son of Mehetabel, who was a secret informer, and he said, Let us meet together in the house of God within the temple, and let us close the doors of the temple, for they are coming to kill you indeed. At night, they will come to kill you. Bible teaches and it says, A fearful person or a foolish, they run minus anyone chasing them. There some people who have run to the villages, yet they don't even have a village. They will even arrest them and take them to police. They are running. People are on the road, but they tell them where are going. I have my friend there, let me go and hide there. You will end up on the border. You run, you hurry. These ones. They wanted to threaten Nehemiah. To make him run. To leave work. They sent him Shemaiah. Next verse. Then I said, should such a man as I flee? And who is there such as I who would go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. You might have dressed with the spirit of fear and you a man. And yet at home. You, 
Genda ulabe chichecho. Genda ulabe chichecho. If something is you tell the wife to go and check what it is. Okutia kukufuru mukazi. Fear makes you a woman yet to a man. No mukazi na chimanya nanga ndi chino nafumbira chiti. The woman gets I got married to a fearful person. Chiti embera. He fears situations. Chiti chisanyi. He fears caterpillars. Chiti ne bwala bo rusiringanye. Even if he sees a worm. Hatia. He fears. Ne bwaula akakonye. Even if he hears something making noise. Mucha la chichete chikonye. Chichete. My wife what is that hearing outside? What is that? You fear everything. Just fear. They told him, let us get into the house. He's like a man like me. Born again like me. Should he fear? I want to encourage you. Even if you've lost the job. See when God is making a new way for you. May the situations rising up. May the storm, you know, that is where God works from. They see God amid the storm, amid his trouble. Amid his trouble, people see opportunities. Opportunity is just there. Even if they have chased you from work. The moment they terminate you from here. Like the owner own of the shop has terminated you. They're like next month you're not coming back to work. The whole world does not begin from there and doesn't end there. And if your landlord tells you. This is the last month. For you to move and go away. The world doesn't begin from there and it doesn't end there. The world is broken. You leave that place, you go to another place. Maybe he's taking you to your house. Do not fear, see the bigness of God. People that know they are God. Maybe the situation, maybe the storm. They have a question. God, what is next? What are you teaching me here? How can I live here now? How can I overcome here? What made Paul and Cyrus overcome? They removed the spirit of fear. And they put them in prison. We are going to kill you. Any time we are going to pray. It's time for worshiping. And they chased fear. The moment God saw them chasing fear. He came and joined them. And then he broke all the chains. And then he made it where there was no way. That is our when Gideon was afraid, the most discouraged. He was hiding. He had food. But he had no place to cook it from. He was afraid. When God met him, he told him, Gideon, mighty man. God sees the mighty one in you. God is seeing the ability in you. Some people are afraid. You bought a plot. You fear that you won't build it. You send him to go there and prophesy upon it. And you stand in it. And you say, here I am going to build a house. Others are afraid now they are chasing people from work. Bible says, we shall not fear. Even if the world changes. Even if the world is troubled. We are not going to fear. Nehemiah said, a man like me. Should he fear? This is where I went to minister. Found a very big church. But there were a few people. But I was like, I asked one of the Christians, one of the ministers, he told me, Pastor, all people left. First of all, Pastor is always at work. The other thing. We are just doing a work in ourselves as ministers. The congregation comes. We make overnights. Pastor is never present. We make overnights. People could come so many. One time we in the overnight. And the police came. And the police came. They got our machines. They arrested us, the ministers. They arrested like five ministers. They took them to police. The Christians ran away. The pastor was home. He was asleep. They knocked. Pastor. 
police is it? The police has come. So and so have been arrested. Pastor so and so has been taken. Minister so and so has been taken. Even so and so has been taken. The pastor came out. Then he was all trembling. I told you already. Do not pray at night. Pastor, what should we do? I can't go there. They will arrest me too. So he got his head. And then he went back to bed. And he slept. And the police arrested this one. And they waited for pastor. Pastor disappeared from church. He can't even go to the police. He's fearing. He can't face the police. They spent some days there. The Christians did a work in themselves. They went and bailed their friends out. After some time, pastor comes out. He comes trembling. He comes trembling. He comes to see. God does not use a fearful person. He to tell you, they are not done by fearful people, no. God tells Moses what I'm holding. Holding a rope. Throw it down. Turns into a snake. Like, hold it. Moses tells him, he's like, hold it. So he held it. Man who is used to sticks are telling him to hold snakes. That is when he shows him the thing I'm going to show you. There is what I'm going to make you do. Mighty things. They threaten. I don't relate with fearful people. God does not work with fearful people. If you are to see the hand of God, do not fear. Chase out fear. Take out fear. your family, dress with boldness, have the power, believe God, God is on your side, do not allow any prophecy they bring, and they have said, everyone has become an informer, even those who are not journalists, they are all now journalists, everyone, there is this, a mighty captain in China has been infected. There is one who told me, who wrote to me. There is a family group Someone wrote that you take hot cups of T6 of them every time. Person who learned about this virus of corona. This is hot water. Six cups. Then I also wrote back. But the one who took six cups he died. So do not fear. Do not fear all these prophets. Do not fear. Lift up your eyes. Put them on the throne. The Bible teaches us that I'll lift up my eyes unto the Lord. Where will my help come from? My help will come from the Lord. When he lifted up his eyes to the mountains, he lifted up his eyes to the to the problem. Like, where will my help come from? Until he knew that his help comes from the Lord. God will protect you. God will provide to you. Just the spirit of fear from today. Whatever you meet, in every situation, in every challenge, see when your God is so big, when he's so mighty, above all other people. God bless you. He want us to pray. We come before you today. We thank you for the word you've given us. Which is the spirit of fear of our life. We are not given a spirit of fear. Spirit of fear comes from our homes. Leaves our hearts. And every arrow the enemy has been sending of threatening us. That one is leaving us. It is leaving us. It is giving way for us. This Holy Spirit feel alive. Give us boldness to stand. Give us boldness to see your goodness. Give us Boldness to confess good. To give you glory. Be glorified through Jesus' name. I believe you've been blessed. And we shall meet on Wednesday. God bless you. But I want to tell you that you can bring your offer to it. Then you put it in the office. When you get time, we shall be there. The office will be open. Especially if they have not done lockdown. Or you can send it on mobile phone. Mobile money. MTN. MTN. 0779. 0 musanvu musanvu 077 mukaga 6 chenda mwenda 99 0 musanvu musanvu mwenda 0779 0 musanvu musanvu 077 mukaga 6 chenda mwenda 99 oba mulungereza in english 077 eh ho oba dojivunula 
e kale mulungereza 0779 077 0853. Uh, the bank account, they will put it on the screen. But we want you to support us. We want to say that we buy a good computer. And then we put right the picture, all the voicing. We want to be uh, watching you when we are not disturbed by anything. God bless you. Pray for you special protection. The hand of the Lord be upon your life. The God provide unto you. The God protect you. The God delight you. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the love of God. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us all. With all our brethren. Peace forever. Amen. God bless you.